Hey everyone and welcome to the best flash tutorial on the internet. This first video is going to be really easy, really simple. We're just going to talk about getting started and learning how to draw in flash. So if you think you have that covered, uh, the next video, uh, you can just skip ahead to that. That's going to talk about actually animating and making things move, some of the more complicated stuff. So uh, anyway, onto this video. Uh, I'm using Flash CS6 Professional, as you can see up here. Uh, so when you start Flash, you're confronted with this screen. Uh, and it's like, what do we do? Well, we want to create a new document, and that's what all these things are for. Uh, I always pick Action Script 2. Uh, it really doesn't matter what you pick. Uh, it's just for you know creating a new document. You can pick Action Script 3 if you're the more rebellious type. It really doesn't matter because we're not going to be using Action Script uh, while animating. So I'm just going to click Action Script 2, and it'll bring us inside of Flash. All right, so now we have a bunch of windows, and I'm going to quickly explain what each of them do. So up here we have the timeline. We're not going to be talking about this in this video. Like I said, uh, the next video will cover this, and this is basically uh, what we use to make things move and animate. Uh, this is basically where you put everything. This is called the stage. Uh, this white area is sort of the camera, I guess. This is sort of what's going to be on screen. Uh, over here we have all of our tools, and those are, you know, obviously what we're going to use to to do everything. Basically, each of them serve a function. I'm not going to go over all of them in this series of uh, videos, but uh, most of the ones that I use often. And over here we have a couple tabs. This is the library tab. Uh, if you import any audio, if you make any symbols within Flash, import anything really, it'll show up in this library in a nice list here. Ours is obviously empty because we just made a new document. And we have the properties tab up here as well. This is very important. This contains a whole bunch of settings and these settings change depending on what tool you have selected. So as you see, I'm clicking on these different things and they're all changing. So by default, you have the selection tool selected. And uh, what I do when I start Flash, a new Flash document, before I do anything else, is, uh, is I play with these settings right here. So uh, as we can see, we have frames per second. The default is 24. That, I usually leave that alone. Uh, you can play with that if you want. Uh, this, the stage size is what I do uh, change, though. By default, it's 550 by 400. I'm not really sure why, but I always change it to uh, 1280 by 720. That's a nice widescreen uh, format and you can see we got bigger so we're going to zoom out and get it all on screen. I know some people use a little less, some people use a little more. It really doesn't matter as long as it's that nice 16 by 9 aspect ratio that will fit YouTube nicely and then uh, will just be a nice widescreen format for you to use. Now another thing I do is I change the stage color. By default it's white and you think okay you know that's a pretty normal color to start with but I always go over here I click this little box we get all these colors I always go to this color wheel up here and I knock it down to a, a nice little off-white, light gray color, just like that. Uh, the reason I do this, and this is only for me, you know, no one is going to see this in the final video. Uh, it's just because I use white a lot in my animations, and white on white, kind of hard to see. So I usually change it to that uh, light gray so I can actually see what I'm doing when I'm using white as a color. Okay, so now we know what we're doing. Now that we're all set up and started, now we can start drawing. Before we start drawing, I'm going to mention that I do use a uh, Wacom Bamboo tablet. Uh, very good, very cool. Uh, if you're getting into animating or any kind of digital art, I highly recommend you getting a tablet. I got this one for like, I don't know, 50 bucks off Newegg. You know, there's different price ranges and different features that you can look at, so you know, browse around, uh, see what fits you, and uh, I highly recommend getting one. Uh, okay, so the first tool we're going to look at is the brush tool. That's right here. And this is basically what we're going to use to make all of our lines. And uh, we just click and we can start drawing right away. Very easy, really cool. Uh, but we are going to talk about a few settings, just so you know. So first of all, we have a couple of these color swatches right here. We have a stroke color and a fill color. Now each tool you use is going to use either one or both of these two color swatches. And obviously you can change them to change the color of whatever tool you're using. The brush uses uh, the fill color. It's considered a fill tool. So if we change the color to say red, now our brush is red. Eh, how simple is that? <laughs> so we're going to change it back to black. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so that's that's what that is. Uh, down, whenever you click on one of these tools, all their settings are going to be held down here. So if we just scroll through these, we can see that uh, some of them don't really have any. Some of them have a few. The brush has quite a bit. So let's quickly look at some of those. Object drawing, uh, always keep that off. It's, it's bad. We're going to get into symbols in the next video. And basically that means that w when that's on, every line you make turns into a symbol automatically. We don't want that, so keep that off. So here we have brush size, that's very important. You can you can click it and you get all these sizes. I always just use the uh, bracket keys on my keyboard. It's an easy way to sort of just scroll through the sizes uh, really quickly. Uh, this is brush shape. I don't really ever use this ever. Maybe I should, I don't know, but uh, you can play around with this and uh, 
get some cool effects probably. And here is use pressure. Now this is really cool and I like this a lot. Basically, if you have a pressure sensitive tablet uh, and this is on, you can then change the width of your line depending on how hard you're pressing. So you can get some really cool line variation. Uh, another uh, real quick setting is smoothing. And this is actually in the properties tab. Like I said, the settings here change depending on which tool you have selected. And with the brush tool selected, smoothing appears. Now this is on a scale from 0 to 100. I usually like to keep it in a middling range, somewhere between 40 and 60. And this is basically just how much Flash will sort of automatically soften and smooth your lines for you. Because otherwise it can look kind of jagged if it's taking a, a very literal uh, translation of what you're doing. So now that we have our brush uh, and we know how to use it and we have uh, the pressure on, we have the brush size, all, and that's all you know, squared away. So let's draw something. Let's draw like a little face maybe. Uh, just real quick, draw like a head and draw some, some eyes. It's like a little surprise face. I'm going to use the eraser real quick. All right, so we got like a little surprise looking guy. The next thing I do when I get my lines down in the drawing is I use a pencil tool. And that's right above the brush tool right here. Uh, it doesn't have nearly as many settings, hardly any. It does have smoothing as well. Uh, but we just use a pencil for some very temporary lines. I usually like to choose a nice bright color that I can see well. A lot of times it's red. Uh, and we're just going to designate, we're going to use this pencil tool to create lines and designate where the shadows are going to go. Uh, so we'll have a shadow like here. Just like that. And it's not only shadows. It can also be highlights. Uh, if we want like a little, I don't know how good this is going to look. Probably not very. <laughs> um, maybe some eye highlights. Sure. Why not? Maybe like a little tongue could go there. It's the same as a brush really, but we use a pencil because uh, we can easily get rid of them later. And then that leaves us with a really clean looking drawing and all of our shadows and everything is still there. So now with the pencil lines in, and now that we know where all, all of our shadows and highlights are going to go, we go to our paint bucket tool. Now this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, basically it's pretty easy. We use the fill color, of course. Uh, we have all these default colors again. I always go to this color swatch, choose exactly what I want. So let's see what this guy's going to look like. He's probably going to be blue. I'm feeling blue right now. Let's, so let's make him blue. Uh, now that we have that selected, we can just click in here and it'll make it blue. Now, let's talk about the one setting that the paint bucket tool does have, and that's uh, fill gaps. As you can see, we filled in his head, and that's great, but it also filled in his eye, and we don't want that. We don't want his eye to be all the same color as his skin. So this right here is the gap size setting, and uh, we can click that, and we get a couple different options. Close small gaps, close medium gaps, and close large gaps. So if I undo that with Control z and I click close, mm, let's say, medium gaps, and I click in here, you can see that it actually closed this little opening here. That's why it filled in, because this wasn't closed. And now it automatically filled that in. But you have to be very careful with the setting, because it'll fill in any tight spaces in your drawing. As you can see, it didn't get into this corner here, because that's too small of a space. It closed that gap for us, too. So you got to be very careful when you, uh, when you use the gap size tool. I'm just going to go with don't close gaps and fill the rest of that in and uh, make sure. So be very careful with that when you're filling your thing. Uh, probably a more safer way of doing it would be to close any gaps yourself with a pencil or brush, but that's a nice little shortcut way of doing it. Alright, so now let's keep filling our guy up. We're gonna get a nice little uh, maybe like a purpley shadowy color. Let's see if that, yeah, it, it looks pretty good. And like a nice little highlight looking color. And his eyes, I don't know what his eyes should be. Maybe his eyes should be, oh, I don't know, something like that. Holy crap. <laughs> sure, why not? Highlights and his mouth will real quickly do. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm sort of working in this middle area. I'm going to talk about that in a, in a later video, too, how I sort of choose my colors. Um, All right, great. So now he's all filled in. We have all the colors filled in. Uh, it basically just works like a coloring book once you have your pencil lines down. So now comes the best part in drawing and the best part in, in animation, and that is getting rid of your pencil lines and making it look nice. So we have to select our guy, and we can either do that with Control A. See that select the whole thing. That's where all those little dots mean. Uh, or we can use our selection tool, the first tool at the top, and just drag a box around him. That'll also select him. Uh, 
And once we have them selected, we go to our pencil color swatch, our stroke color, click that, and click this white box up here with the red slash through it. That's going to get rid of all of our pencil lines. Bam! Just like that. Now we can see the shadows are the only thing that's there, and it looks really nice. Uh, so that's pretty much it. And then you do that, you know, a couple hundred times and you have an animation. <laughs> pretty easy, pretty straightforward. A couple other tools uh, to keep in mind real quick. Uh, over here we have the eyedropper tool. And this, of course, just lets you pick up any color on your stage, or really even anywhere, uh, really quick and easy. As you can see, our fill color right now is that dark pink, but if we want to take that blue real quick, bam, now it's that dark blue and, uh, you know, light blue, whatever we want. Uh, also, of course, the eraser tool, very straightforward. It erases. Real easy. <laughs> Real easy to do. Uh, also, um, each tool, all these tools, have a shortcut on your keyboard. And to find that shortcut out, you just hold your mouse over it. So you see we have pencil tool Y, brush tool B, and all these things. And I use that a lot, so I can quickly scroll through them and get exactly what I need at any time. So that does it for this video. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, leave any questions you have in the comments. And stick around for the next video where we talk about animation and actually making things move. Scary stuff. So stick around. Hey there, and welcome to the second video in this Flash tutorial where we talk about the animation part of animation. So here in this video, uh, as you can see, I already drew a very happy looking face. He's thrilled to be here. Uh, I didn't save the other file, so I just went and drew this face just like we drew the last one. So in this tutorial, we're going to be looking completely at the timeline up here. This is where all the magic happens, uh, where we put the frames in, and where we make things move. So first off, the timeline is made up of frames, and there are two different kinds of frames to keep in mind. The first one, and easily the most important one, is keyframes. Now you know it's a keyframe if it has this little black dot in the frame like this. This is a keyframe. Now our happy little guy here occupies this keyframe and we know that because our playhead, that's this red thing with the line going down, is sitting on that frame because it really doesn't have anywhere else to sit. We only have one frame in our animation. Uh, and we can tell that he's in it because it is gray. If a frame is empty, it'll be white. So a button we can press on our keyboard to sort of modify and alter frames is F5. This will create a regular frame. That's the second kind of frame. So if I just click this frame, highlight it and select it, uh, and then press F5, you can see that it sort of extends it out. And it's making all these regular frames. Now as you can see, these frames don't have the dot in it because they're not keyframes. So all this really does, think of these regular frames as an extension of whatever keyframe comes before them. So now we can drag our playhead back to the start, hit play, and you'll see our animation is now 10 frames long. So now uh, another thing you can do is you can actually make keyframes as well, and that's with F6. Now, keyframes are important because they sort of designate where a change happens. It's a new scene, a new sort of picture can emerge. If we went and said, okay, we want to edit uh, the sixth frame in this animation to make him good, well, if we just edited this regular frame here, it would affect all the frames around it between the keyframes. So it would basically be the same as going to this keyframe and editing it. Because this whole section sort of in one, uh, it's all tied together basically. All these frames are sort of tied together and if you change one of them, you'll change all of them. So basically keyframes acts as a divider between those sections. So if we go to here and press F6, you'll see that we made a new keyframe, there's a new black dot there, and now we have two sections. Likewise, we can also press F6 at the end and it'll copy whatever picture was before it and put it in this keyframe over here. We could even go all the way out here to frame 40 press F6 and it'll make a long extension to this keyframe and even add another keyframe out there. So now if we wanted to go in and edit our guy on frame 6 we could do that. So now let's say we want to go in and edit him. Let's grab black and give him some glasses. Some sweet looking glasses. Looks rad. And now we can see that that only affected the section that we were highlighted in that our playhead was on. And it affects this whole session but not the one before it and not the one after it because those keyframes sort of signify a new uh, Thing. So we can make all sorts of keyframes, and, uh, and the last button you can press is F7. Now this is basically the same as F6, except it's a blank keyframe. So it'll basically not only make a keyframe, but also delete whatever picture was in that area. So now you can see all this keyframe, and all these frames after it are now white, signifying that they are empty. So now that we know a little bit about how to edit and make frames, uh, I'm just going to quickly delete all of these. I'm going to click there, and then hold Shift, and click over here to make a long selection and just right click and hit remove frames and that's just going to delete them all nice and easy real quick so now we're back to our only one frame and we're going to make a frame by frame animation real quick so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out here I'm going to press F7 a few times so now we have five keyframes one of them is full 
and four of them are blank. We could also just did our shift click and press F7 to make a whole bunch at once. Another thing I'm going to do too is I'm going to click on each of these and press F5. That'll extend each of them out so that instead of one frame, they're now two frames long and effectively double the length of the animation. So the first thing you're doing when you uh, start an animation, you have all these frames, you want to fill them with pictures so that you get a moving picture, is uh, you want to get the main poses down. For this guy here, we're going to have him sort of opening his mouth and closing it like he's eating something. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to, out to this middle frame, we're going to skip a frame, and we're going to turn on onion skin. Now the onion skin buttons are down here. And they all do pretty much the same thing. I usually pick the first one. That's going to give us a, a, a nice uh, faint, transparent, semi-transparent image of um, uh, the frames around it. So when we click that, we see that nothing really changed except we have these new little gray boxes extending out from our playhead. Now you can click and drag these circles to extend and see which frames you want to see. So obviously we want to see uh, the frames before it, so I'm going to click this and drag it over the frames over here, and now we can see a faint picture of our guy. That's just a guideline so that we know where he is and where we should be drawing. So if we want to have him uh, opening his mouth, we're just going to draw him like this, and he's going to be like that. Real wide. I, Bam. Real quick, real simple. And then we can go out here, uh, skip another frame, and uh, go out here and have him closing his mouth. Now you can see that our uh, our onion skin extends down to this last frame. It doesn't extend all the way down to that one, the first picture, but that's okay because we don't we don't really need that at this point. We just want to know where he is when his mouth is open. So now he's closed his mouth, looking real happy about it. So there now we have a rough sort of animation as we slide our playhead back and forth. We can see that he's opening his mouth and closing it. Obviously there are these blank spots in between. So now we're going to get to these blank spots. I'm going to turn on our onion skin again and you can see now that we can see the frames both uh, behind us and ahead of us. So that's why there's two pictures on the screen. So with these between frames we just want to sort of draw in between all these lines and try and get a nice middling sort of animation. That's terrible. Ugh. So I'm just going to sort of go between like that. He's just starting to open his mouth, turning his head as he does. And we're going to use the eraser to clean that up a little bit. It looks meh. looks nasty. I'm just going to redo that whole bit. And the eye is going to be sort of between these two. It's moving up and sort of over. This eye is sort of wrapping around to the other side of his head. Starting to open his mouth. And you can turn off onion skin and sort of check how we're doing. Not bad, not bad. So now we're going to do the same thing over here. Now as you can see here we have three pictures on the stage. That's a little bit too much. We don't need all that. So we're going to drag this one. And we have all that because it, obviously these gray boxes extend over all these frames. Uh, we're just going to drag this over so that we only see this section here. And not uh, the second section that we just drew. Same thing, we're just going to sort of do it in between. And he's closing his mouth. I... I good enough, good enough. And now we should have a uh, pretty nice animation, pretty simple. Yeah, it's not bad. So now we uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. And if you wanted to get really fluid with your animation and really go crazy, you could even make keyframes at all these points and do in-betweens of your in-betweens, basically. And that's sort of how you do it. You know, you start with the main poses, then put uh, the in-betweens of those poses, and then you can even put in-betweens of those in-betweens and even put in-betweens of those in-betweens. It depends on, you know, the animation, uh, you know, different situations call for different things. But then, of course, if we were, like, really seriously doing this, we'd go in and color all these drawings in as well. So now we're going to talk about a cool thing that you can do in Flash called tweening. Uh, we're back down to one frame, and uh, to tween, if you're going to tween anything, first got to talk about uh, making this guy a symbol. Now, symbols are really just, really just a container that you keep in your library. Uh, it has its own timeline, and it's very useful in animation. So. Uh, to make this guy a symbol, we're going to select him. We're gonna, I'm just going to hit Control A here, and we hit Modify and Convert to Symbol. We can also hit Insert New Symbol if we wanted to make just a blank symbol with nothing in it. But I'm going to hit Modify, Convert to Symbol. Uh, we get all this stuff. We can close this advanced thing, make it a little bit less scary, uh, and we're going to name him. So let's name him uh, Happy Face. Doesn't matter too much. Uh, type. Now I always go with graphic. Uh, that'll have its own timeline. It's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. Button. There's three different options here. Button. Uh, we're not going to use. You only use that if you're making something interactive like a video game or a website. 
movie clips are basically the same as graphics. You're allowed a few different uh, options, uh, effect options. Um, for some reason, for me, they don't export uh, very well sometimes, and that's why I use graphics over movie clips. But otherwise, they're pretty much the same. I don't know if it's just me, uh, so you can try that out and play with it if you want, but I always just go with graphic and hit OK. So now you see that when we click him, he now has this blue box around him. That's what we want. That means it's a symbol. But also, you'll notice that if I wanted to go in and like erase him or something, I can't do it anymore. It won't let me. So if you want to edit a symbol, we can either double click him on the stage, or we can find it in our library up here. So we can always just click that, right click it, and hit edit. And that'll bring us inside of our symbol, and now you can see that we can uh, edit him again, erase him, do whatever we want. You also notice that you know that we're in a symbol because it says scene one and then happy face. We're inside the symbol. If we ever want to go back to our scene, uh, our main scene, we just click scene one right here. And that'll bring us back to our main stage. So we're going to go back inside the symbol real quick. You can see that it has its own sort of timeline. And we can edit this timeline, of course, just like the main timeline. Uh, we can make a keyframe here, extend that out a little bit. So now we have two sort of sections. And maybe in this one, maybe he turns, uh, I don't know, blue. Let's make him blue. Wow. <laughs> so now he's like a hideous flashing yellow and blue sort of thing. And if we extend this out so that it'll play our symbol, we can see if, as we drag our thing across, it'll, it'll just play our symbol, and our symbol will just loop over and over again. Pretty cool. Also, we can just take symbols from our library and just drag them straight onto the stage, and they will all perform their timelines. So you can do that to sort of have, uh, you know, timelines within timelines, and uh, you can put symbols inside of other symbols, and symbols inside of those symbols, and it can get kind of complicated. Uh, I'm going to go over that a little bit more uh, detail and a little more clearly in the third video. But for now, that's all you really need to know about symbols. Uh, of course, you don't have to have a timeline within your symbol. You can just keep it as one frame like we started with. And as long as you have a symbol, we can tween. So now to get on to tweening. On our main timeline here, we have our guy. Of course, he's a symbol, and he's going to be flashing the whole time. Uh, we're going to create a keyframe out here at the end. So now we have a starting point to our tween and an ending point to our tween. Now... All we have to do is choose where he's going to go. So let's say maybe we want him to, on this keyframe, make sure this keyframe is selected, we want to have him move off the screen. So I'm just going to click and drag him all the way off. So now we can see that he starts here. This is our first keyframe. And of course, these frames afterwards carry on that message. So he's going to stay right there until we hit this new keyframe where he's off the stage. So now what we can do is we can right click anywhere between these two frames uh, and hit Create Classic Tween. Bam. Now you can see those frames turn blue, a little arrow goes across, and now if we slide our thing back and forth, we can see that he actually moves. He slides across the stage instead of teleports. And that's basically tweening. And obviously you can do a lot more with tweening than just move, sliding them around the stage. Uh, if we click him, we can hit modify, transform, and then free transform. We can change his size, we can make him like shrink as he goes. So now he gets bigger and goes smaller. Uh, we can make him turn upside down if we wanted to. So now he'll... Um, shrink, spin, and move. Uh, and we can also have a lot of other cool effects over in the Properties tab. If you have your symbol selected, you go to Properties, you have these color effects right here. You have Brightness, Tint, Alpha. Um, they're really useful. They can provide some really cool effects. So we can have him, say, change to a tint. Maybe we want him to be um, really green as he goes. There it is. Nice nice lime green. So now not only is he going to do all that, but he's going to slowly change to a green color. So you can see how tweening is really, you know, it makes it really easy, really cool. Just make sure it's a symbol before you tween it. One last thing I want to talk about real quick is layers. Uh, layers are really handy, and if you worked with Photoshop before, you might be familiar with them. So as you can see right here, we've been working on layer one this whole time. Uh, if we want to make a background, if we want to make something in front of him or behind him, we can make, use layers to do that uh, and make that a lot easier. So if we hit this button right here, this is new layer, and these buttons all down here are layer editing buttons. So this is for deleting. You can make a folder and contain your layers inside a folder as well. So if we hit new layer, you'll see that we have layer two. And it has its own sort of set of frames. It has nothing to do with the tween and all that other stuff that we made. That's all in layer one. So say we wanted to make a nice background for him, maybe a nice uh, uh, terrible, horrible <laughs> uh, blue background. It's going to make a nice big blue box. Cover the stage, and it'll be wonderful. Ah, oh, he disappeared. 
Well, that's because layer two is on top of layer one. Therefore, it's going to appear uh, further in front. It's going to appear in front of layer one. So if we want to change that, which we do, we're just going to drag layer two below layer one and change the order of that. So that's pretty simple. That's really easy. Um, always keep everything on separate layers if you can. It'll make life a lot easier, and you can edit things uh, more individually. So now if we play this, uh, you can see that our background stays because obviously the keyframe for the background extends all the way uh, through the animation. Of course, our guy still spins and uh, does his thing too. A couple other cool editing options for layers. Uh, this eyeball here, if we click the dots under the eyeball, it'll hide whatever layer you choose. Uh, this lock, if you click that, it'll lock the layer. I highly recommend locking any layers you're not working on because it's very easy to accidentally start working on the wrong layer uh, and that creates a whole bag of worms that you want to avoid uh, if at all possible. And then this box right here, uh, very handy, it'll show you, it'll sort of hide it and I don't know if you can see that but uh, it creates sort of a green outline. If I hide this background layer you can see it a little better. It's very useful for knowing where something is on a layer but still wanting to see through it and draw behind it or something like that. So I use that quite a lot. So that's pretty much it for the animation part of this tutorial. Hopefully that made some degree of sense and wasn't too confusing. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments as always. Uh, and stay tuned for the third video where I give general tips about um, just random stuff including animation and drawing and all that jazz. So uh, stay tuned for that. Hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, welcome to part three of the tutorial. This part is basically just going to be very practical stuff, uh, miscellaneous tips and other just random stuff that I think uh, you ought to know. So I'm going to be skipping around to some past animations maybe, uh, you know, show you some real, you know, use of some of the things that I've been talking about and hopefully it'll make a little more sense and uh, even introduce some new things. So let's take a look. So in regards to tweening, you may remember this if you watched my um, uh, Let's Animate of where we made this very, uh, <laughs> very crazy looking Simon here. Um, basically, this was done with a lot of tweening. Uh, and symbols. So you can see this tween right here is basically Simon moving sort of forward. And we can sort of see that he grows and sort of turns. Uh, let me get rid of this background here. It's a bit distracting. Uh, if I remove this tween, obviously he's just going to stay right there. And the end point is just going to like appear. So we can edit this symbol. Let me unlock the layer. You can see all the layers I have here too. So you can see, <laughs> you can see what animations can sort of turn into after a while. Uh, so one, uh, another way to edit a symbol is just by double clicking it on your stage and that will bring you into the symbol. You can see it here, scene one, and then now we're in Simon laughing. Uh, and this is what inside the symbol looks like. These are the timelines of the actual symbol. Um, each of these layers holds a different body part. So this bottom layer here holds his arm with the stick in it since it's the uh, one that's furthest back. It's, it's behind everything, basically. And that's also a symbol. You can tell with the blue box when you click it the blue box appears and if we double click that we'll go into Simon Arm 2 and you can see it's just a stationary image just one frame it's almost like well, what's the point of making it a symbol well if we go back into Simon laughing you'll see that we have all these little tweens here and that sort of makes it rotate and you can't rotate and tween a rotation of something that's not a symbol so like we, like I demonstrated, you know, we just sort of drew something and were able to tween him across the stage. Um, that really only works if you're doing that. If you want to alter him in another way, such as rotating him, such as you know, uh, distorting him in some other way, changing color, something else, uh, you're going to need to have him change to a symbol. So, um, really, if you're going to use tweening, you should just convert it to a symbol. Basically, is really what what it comes down to. Uh, also, what made this even easier. Uh, was being able to, if I just hide the rest of Simon here, you can see this little circle here. Now what this little circle does, if we choose our uh, free transform tool, that's the third one down, and we can mouse over that, and our little arrow will get a little circle next to it too. That'll change sort of the pivot point of the symbol, so if you are rotating, uh, it'll basically rotate around this point. I put it here at the start of the arm, so that it would move sort of arm-like, and not like by default I think it always starts in the center and of course we don't want it to turn that way we want it to be near the arm and then turn that way uh, these other symbols here this should be the body uh, and if we go inside the body symbol the body just sort of goes up and down like constantly and that'll just loop throughout this symbol 
Uh, so that's what that's doing, as you can see. Um, and yeah, you probably get the idea. This arm should be about the same as the other one. The head is a complicated piece. The head uh, is its own symbol. We can click inside that and see that it is also made up of, um, if we can click, oh, there we go, two more symbols, the top and bottom part of his head. If we click on the bottom half of his head, you'll see that that's made up of, well, these aren't symbols, but the tongue is. If we can click on it, there we go. The tongue is its own symbol, and the tongue is just wiggling. So you can see we have literally a symbol inside a symbol inside a symbol inside a symbol, and then put on the stage. So that's sort of what I'm talking about when I, I talk about you know creating a puppet and making each body part its own symbol and and um, you know just manipulating it with tweens. You know that's one way to do it. So I know we talked a little bit about symbols already. We talked a lot about symbols actually, but. Uh, we talked about if I select this guy, convert to symbol, I always use graphic. But if you use a movie clip, you can get some other really cool effects. So um, let's see what we can do with that. So if we go to properties, we can click on them, and you see that we have our standard color effects. We have you know brightness, tint, alpha, just like um, the graphic option. But we also have this little filter window down here, which graphics doesn't have. So if we create a new filter, It'll give you all these really cool sort of options that you can play with, and uh, this can let you, you know, we can blur it and we can edit, you know, how much it's blurred. Uh, you know, we can we can give it a drop shadow, you know, nice easy drop shadow. We can glow and change the color of that glow. So you get a lot of sort of Photoshop like effects um, when when using movie clips instead. Another real quick and easy sort of tip is uh, if you want to get that sort of wiggly line sort of look in your animations. Um, you just go to your symbol, go to your symbol, there we go, and make another keyframe. So now we have two keyframes, and on one of the keyframes, you go to modify, make sure you selected uh, shape, and then you have all these different sort of line altering options here. You can hit smooth, straighten, advanced smooth, all this stuff. If you just hit smooth, really any of those will do the job. And you move it back and forth, you can see that it changed your lines slightly. So that now we, if you look very closely, you can see that if we play our movie, he does a little wiggly thing. So that's how that works. Another thing to be aware of when using Flash is that the lines uh, can be a little finicky. So if I make this like line like across here, oh, that's nice, that's great. I'm not going to change the size of the brush at all, but I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to make the same line. Well, as you can see, we didn't make the same line, did we? It's a little bit smaller. That's because the brush size is uh, relative to your window screen rather than relative to the actual uh, dimensions of the stage. Uh, this is something that really trips me up at first, and it makes it kind of difficult to go in for the finer details when your brush size keeps changing. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind. Uh, and as a general rule of thumb, I like to keep a thinner brush as best I can. I think that looks the cleanest. Um, and just, you know, in general, try to keep your brush sizes consistent. Uh, you don't want, like, a lot of variation like this. I mean, you can do whatever you want, you know, that's what makes everyone's work unique. But uh, that's a general rule of thumb that I follow. Another thing that I I do, and you don't have to do, of course, but when picking colors, color picking is a, I mean, you can pick any of these colors right here. Uh, I always go to the color wheel, and in this color wheel, you can get exactly what you want. For me, personally, I always stick around like this sort of middle area here. As you can see, the higher up you go, it gets more saturated. That means it gets brighter, uh, and more, the color is stronger. And as you go lower, obviously, that, that, uh goes away, gets desaturated, and, and, and the color sort of fades and gets duller. And of course you can slide this up and down to get tint and shade of any color you want. Uh, but yeah, I, I usually stick around in this area right here, sort of middling area. Uh, a lot of programs, their default colors all sit like right at the top of this thing. And if you just use all these sort of default colors and use all these colors like at the max like uh, saturation, um, it can look very sort of loud and obnoxious and sort of, it can clash, you know, so, uh, again, you know, it could be a style that you're looking for, but, uh, you know, for me, for me, I just, I just like to stay around here, you know, only reach down here for like, you know, super dark shadows or something and only reach up here for, you know, extreme sources of light such as fire or explosions. And just to drive that point home, you can see all these default colors right here. If you click on them, you can see where they are. And they are all right at the very top of that window. So I'm going to show you something else about tweening right here. Uh, as you can see, I have a very standard tween. If we play, you just go to moves across the screen. Uh, one thing you can do to sort of add some more natural movement to your tween is if you go under properties and you click on your tween, you can just left click anywhere on the tween. 
uh, you get an option called Ease. Ease makes things very easy. You see what I did there? But yeah, if 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 you if you change this value, uh, we can set it all the way to 100. That's going to have him ease out, which means it's going to start faster and then get slower as he reaches the end of the tween. Just like that. It sort of looks like he's slowing down or something. Uh, likewise, you can also ease in, and just the opposite will happen. That can give you some really cool effects, really easy to do. And another thing to make your life uh, with tweening very much easier is uh, if you also click on it, you see all, you have all these options here. Another one is um, rotation. You can rotate uh, very easily. Instead of doing it manually, it's a pain in the ass. So just, you know, uh, I already clicked it actually. But you have this drop down thing. By default, it's auto. Uh, but if you hit like clockwise or counterclockwise, it'll just sort of do it for you. Very nice. Very cool. Now, audio is a, a very important part of Flash, of course. Audacity is a fantastic program, uh, very easy to record. As you can see, I'm recording my voice right now. That's what it's doing. You just hit this little record button. It's going to just sort of do its thing. It's, uh, Then you stop it, save it as an Audacity project file, or export it as a wave, and you're good to go. Uh, it's a free program, and uh, I highly recommend it. It's very straightforward, very easy to use. Anyway, once you have your wave file, Flash really likes wave files, by the way, uh, you can go to File, Import, then import to library is what I usually do. That's going to stick your file right in your library. You can uh, just grab your audio file. And you can see right here, I have my Brox gel uh, wave file here. That's, that's the audio for the whole thing. I just put it into one uh, clip. So what you can do with audio is uh, how you put it into your movie, basically, is uh, you get an open layer dedicated only for your audio. And uh, go on the first, make sure there's no keyframes, no anything weird going on. If you do it in one bulk thing like I do. Uh, if you use several audio clips, you may uh, dedicate a few layers to them so you can sort of put them on top of each other and arrange them how you want. Uh, some people do that. Uh, I usually try and get it into one audio clip if I can. But anyway, I get to that open layer, select it, and just drag it straight in. Anywhere will do. And look, now it's there. And now we have sound. Hey, Brock! And you're not going to want to put any other things in this layer. You just want to like lock it and just leave it forever and never look at it again, basically. <laughs> Make sure, though, that when you put it in, if you select your layer unlocked, uh, that the sync is set to stream. Not event, not any of these other ones stream, because that's really going to let you hear the words uh, and hear your audio as you're sort of doing it, and it'll just make life a lot easier. Well, that's pretty much all my tricks of the trade, or most of them anyway. Hopefully it uh, helped you learn something about Flash. It's really not too bad. Uh, just go in and play with it. You know, trial and error is the best way to learn. At least I think so. But hopefully this gave you a good starting point. And uh, if you're looking to become an animator, or really whatever you're trying to do, uh, you know, don't you know pay attention to subscribers or views or how much attention you're getting. You know, do it for yourself. And do it for the few people that do see you. And if you're talented, and if you work hard enough, uh, you'll definitely get attention, trust me, I promise you. Um, you know, because good talent and good content is really, really hard to ignore uh, for people. So, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you learned something. And, uh, if again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And I, or maybe some other uh, knowledgeable passerby, will help you with uh, any problems you come across in Flash. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.